Hey y'all, I'm Brooklyn, your friendly neighborhood witch, and today we are going to make some Yule incense. Now there are plenty of videos out there on YouTube um, on the history of Yule, how to celebrate. This is not going to be that, but I will link below some of my favorites because um, they can be incredibly insightful and useful. Today I just want to give you a recipe to use in order to incorporate it into your own Yule winter solstice uh, rituals. So before we get started, there's a couple things I want to go over with incense making. Um, there's a difference between loose incense, um, incense cones, incense sticks. Each one of these different types of incenses are going to require different tools or ingredients. So for example, with um, loose incense, you're going to need some sort of incense charcoal. It could be bamboo charcoal, it could be your regular incense charcoal discs, it could be a dupe herbal coal. Um, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, it's spelled D-H-O-O-P, but I'll put a thingy up on the screen. Whereas for sticks, for example, you'll need to make sure that you have a uh, bamboo blank. Uh, you can pretty much get them anywhere online, but I'll put some links in the description below. Next, we need to talk about different types of binders. When you are making a cone or a stick, um, you'll need some sort of binding agent. Um, the most popular ones are Joss powder, Mako powder, sometimes I hear those interchange, so um, you can also use guar gum. You can find that in like the baking section of some, not all, but some grocery stores. I've worked with it a little bit. I don't always love the way I feel like it can make my incense smell, but that just might be the specific blends that I was working with. Give it a shot, give it a try, see if it works. If you don't have any of these binders, loose incense is gonna be your best option. Um, but again, you can purchase these wood binders and these binding agents on um, Amazon. You can get them on Etsy, just really anywhere online. Just type it in, you'll find it. I'll try to remember to put some links below. With this blend, for example, we are gonna be using a lot of resin and resin can be very tacky without some sort of wood binder or binding agent. So for this recipe, we are gonna be using pine resin, frankincense, myrrh, cinnamon, clove, and let me see if I forgot anything else. No, I did not. And then of course, I'm going to be using some mako powder as my binding agent. Now you don't need all these ingredients. If all you have is cinnamon and clove that you got from the grocery store, that's totally fine. This isn't a baking show, this is your craft. So do what works for you. It's totally fine. You might need to alter the recipe a little bit and do a little more trial and error just because different ingredients are going to react differently. Um, but this is, this is your thing. It's your thing, you know? One of the ways I'm celebrating winter solstice Yule is by going out and foraging for pine resin. And actually, all the resin that we foraged out here in our home in Georgia, um, we're gonna use in this recipe. If you don't have it where you're at, that's totally fine. You can purchase wild harvested, um, ethically sourced pine resin on Etsy. I've seen plenty of people that will put it up on their shops. If we harvest enough to sell, we'll put it up on our shop. I understand that not everybody has access to pine trees, but if you do, it is a beautiful and magical way to celebrate the winter solstice. Pine trees naturally leak out small amounts of sap, and whenever there's some sort of damage done to the tree, a tree breaks or something, I don't know, else happens to it, um, it'll leak out even bigger clusters of uh, sap and then it dries and it turns into a resin that you can use. And you could burn this like pine sap all by itself, call it a day, and that could be your Yule incense. That works too. And now for the recipe. Okay, so for our recipe, we're gonna need a fourth teaspoon of pine, a fourth teaspoon of clove, a half a teaspoon of cinnamon, a half teaspoon of frankincense and myrrh, and one teaspoon of mako powder or joss powder. And if you're gonna do guar gum, I would go less than that. Start, start with maybe like a fourth teaspoon, add in more as needed. Again, I haven't experimented with that, so, <laughs> How, you, how you're able to tell though if your binding agent is working pop properly is that your dough, when we get, you'll see what I mean, um, has the correct consistency. But more on that later, you'll get to see that as we go. 
And again, if you are just doing the loose incense, you do not need any of these binding agents that I've mentioned at all. So this recipe here is gonna make a very small batch. Like I'm talking like, uh, like two sticks or like two cones or maybe like four really tiny slender sticks. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to leave room for error. I have learned the hard way that there is nothing worse than making a huge batch and fucking it up. <laughs> so if you want to double this or triple this, go all in. That's your prerogative. Um, but this is where I'm going to start with it. And now we're going to powder the herbs again. If you're doing loose incense, you don't need to do this, but I find that I prefer to do it just because it allows me to evenly distribute the blend. You can use a mortar and pestle. Uh, you can use a coffee grinder. You can use one of those like smoothie blender things, whatever they're called. Um, I think I wrote it down, but I can't find it. Oh, I guess it's just called a blender, a countertop blender. Anyway, you can use any of those. You just wanna make sure that after that you use a sifter to kind of get it a little more fine uh, you don't have to if you want a chunky clunky <laughs> uh, incense blend go for it just keep an eye on it when you do burn it uh, if it's in a form of a stick or a cone because some of those chunkier bits can cause like a bigger ember spark and flare I don't really care because I do not leave my incense unattended like I don't leave my house with incense burning but just want to throw that in there. Now we're going to put all of our ingredients into a bowl and we are going to mix it up. Make sure you're using a bowl or dish or whatever that you're not going to use to eat with or do. I don't care. Um, but the reason I say this is because the resin uh, can be very tacky and very, very difficult to completely uh, remove from a surface. Once it's all evenly mixed together, if you're just doing your loose incense, you can stop here. And all you'll need to do is take your tongs and your incense charcoal and light it, and then sprinkle your mixture on top of it, and there you have your loose incense blend. So for those that are continuing on with making the incense sticks, this is the part where we add in the water and or essential oils of our choosing. Now I add the essential oils first because it is moisture. It does alter the consistency of your incense dough. And then after that, I will add in as much water as needed. The reason why I don't give like an exact amount of water is because it is entirely dependent on your environment. If you're in a really humid environment, um, your, your herbal consistencies might be a little different, you know, all of that plays a factor. So this is why I don't give an exact amount of water to add because you can always add more water. You can't add less. As for the oils, I'm going to be adding my own essential oil blend into this. I'm going to be using 25 drops of the uh, oil blend into this mixture. And I'm working on a, um, an incense making class at the moment. And in that I'll go in, to more depth on how to add in uh, your essential oil blend without using dipropylene glycol. But for now, we're easily able to evenly distribute this oil blend into our uh, incense dough because it's a small batch. We just wanna make sure that we're slowly working it in there while mixing the dough um, and it'll be fine. And again, oils first, then water. And then once your dough starts to look and feel well, I guess not look, but once it starts to feel like a Play-Doh like consistency, it's good to go. So basically it's not too crumbly, but it's also not too like tacky and sticky. When you've done that, you, you've added too much moisture to your dough. But once it's the right consistency, it's ready to be molded. Um, for the cones, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just kind of squeeze it into the shape of a cone the best you can. There are many ways to do it. Uh, you could start by like pinching it or you could start by rolling it a little and then pinching it. It's it's up to you. The more slender it is, the easier you're gonna be able to get your cone to burn from top to bottom all the way down. Sometimes the cones that are a little too uh, wide on the bottom, they, they struggle burning all the way down for that reason. So just again, trial and error. This is why this is a small batch for that reason. And then with the sticks, roll them, you know, like you're playing with Play-Doh, turning it into a snake. 
I like my instant sticks to look like corn dogs, like little tiny corn dogs, but you do what you want to do. There are many ways to roll instant cone or roll instant sticks. This is just how I like to do it. And then once I get it to uh, the way that I like it, I take my bamboo blank and I put it up the middle of one side all the way to the top. When you get bamboo blanks, they're going to be um, probably about like 11 inches, eight inches long or something like that. Uh, we cut ours down so that it can fit our little mini corn dog <laughs> incense stick look uh, But you can do do your thing do what you want once your cones and sticks are shaped the way you like them Put it on a wood block or on something with wax paper on it Just anything that's gonna allow it to dry evenly You may need to rotate your sticks to kind of help or in the case of a cone After like a day of drying maybe tip it over on its side so that the bottom can fully dry all the way through or if you have a food dehydrator um, like I have you put it on the lowest possible temperature setting. So mine goes all the way down to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. And then you're just gonna put it on the rack. And usually after like eight to 10 hours, it's fully dry. Again, this depends on your environment, how humid it is, the consistency of the dough you made, what uh, roots, herbs, and resins are in your incense blend. All of that plays a factor. So for the most part, you are gonna have to kind of eyeball it and you'll know that your incense isn't all the way dry or that you did something wrong if um, your incense stick or cone isn't burning all the way down. Once it's dry, you just light it up and incorporate it how you see fit into your daily ritual and practice, or in this case, for Yule. Or if you just like the smell of it and you just wanna burn it for the aromatic appeal, that's cool too, whatever floats your boat. I may or may not put these up in the shop. It depends if I'm able to harvest enough pine for it. Um, if it is, you'll see the link down in the description below, but that's all for now. I hope y'all enjoyed this video and I will see y'all next time. Bye.